Let's say you like the VW Beetle, and you also like convertibles. Well, maybe you should consider buying a Volkswagen Beetle convertible. Well, before you do, here's what it's like to actually spend some time with one. Visually, the Beetle convertible exudes a lot of charm. The soft top gathers on the rear deck like the old school Beetle, and with the top up, the rounded arch of the hard top remains mostly intact. It's a handsome package. Notice I didn't say cute. According to Volkswagen, 40% of Beetle buyers are men. I can't imagine the bros are going to flock to the Beetle convertible, but given all the changes they've made, it really has a more gender neutral appeal than it ever has in the past. In talking to the folks from Volkswagen, they've described the Beetle convertible as sporty. I don't know if I'd use the word sporty myself, but it is fun. The steering is slow but consistent, and the handling is capable yet docile. Add it all up and you have a package that's fun in a low consequence kind of way. Hack the roof off of a lot of cars and what you're left with is a limp noodle of a chassis. Not so with the Beetle convertible. You can feel a slight shudder through the steering wheel over bumps just to remind you that the structural integrity of the coupe has been compromised, but only ever so slightly. For tooling around town or Thelma Louise style trips to Las Vegas, the standard 2.5 liter 5 cylinder engine is perfectly fine. But for drivers like me who appreciate an enhanced sense of dynamism, the 2 liter turbocharged engine is a better choice. It packs a nice punch coming out of corners, and if you play your cards right, you can get the front tires to spin just a little bit. There we are. Interestingly, VW only offers the base engine with a six-speed automatic transmission. A smart move since base engine buyers probably don't care to shift for themselves. More engaged drivers will probably skew to the diesel and turbocharged engines, both of which come standard with a six-speed manual. I have fairly short hair, so you probably can't tell, but with the windows down and the top lowered, it's a little bit breezy in here. Raise the windows, and it calms things nicely. Of course, you can always put the top up, but then why did you buy a Beetle convertible? What are you, uptight? All right, I'll concede there are times when you might want to drive with the top up. For example, a biblical plague, or a swarm of locusts, or maybe you've driven to a Gallagher concert. In those circumstances, you'll be happy to know that the top provides a nice, cozy, wind-free environment, and it also keeps interior noise relatively low. It's a minor gripe, but you actually have to hold the button the entire time when raising or lowering the top. The button's high placement makes doing so a bit awkward, but given the top only takes 9.5 seconds to lower and 11 to raise, you should be able to power through the pain. Top aside, there are other practicality issues to consider with the open air bug. With convertibles, it's not uncommon to have compromised luggage space. In the case of the Beetle convertible, it's not too bad. 7.1 cubic feet of space, though keep in mind the aperture is a little bit narrow, and even though you do have fold down seats, again, sort of a narrow pass through. So if you're gonna bring home that grandfather clock, have it stick out the roof. When they say do not cover, they really do mean it. But Mikey, you say, I've got a bunch of dancing hula girls and I have nowhere to place them. Find somewhere else. In the event of a rollover, this little cover will pop off thanks to the power of pyrotechnics, revealing a little roll bar on this side and that side. That coupled with this reinforced A-pillar mean that there's never really a good time to roll your car, but there's also never been, at least in the Beatles history, a safer time. Did you know that when you cut the roof off of a car and you put some convertible components, it makes the rear seats a little bit tighter? Let's see how tight the rear seats are in the Beetle convertible. Yeah, so there's some shoulder intrusion here and the seats are pretty vertical, but if you get in the position for a Grand Marshal, hey, parade time, it ain't so bad. Not all convertibles are created equal. Sometimes the windshield comes back a little bit far, and from a visual standpoint, you don't really feel that sense of openness. It's one of the nice things about the Beetle convertible is that it cuts off right here, so you're always seeing a little bit of sky in your view. One of the other great things about the convertible is that they've decided to make heated seats standard, which takes away any excuse you have for putting the top up just because it's a little cold out. Ooh!
Having spent valuable time in the VW Beetle convertible, we like it, though it's not for everyone. Do you prefer conservative styling and hard top security? Dynamic handling? Italian charm, easy parking, and a surprisingly low price tag? What about rear drive American muscle? See, there's a convertible for most tastes, but for Ernest's whimsical charm, the Beetle's really hard to top. It delivers bundles of fun, has a very competitive sub $26,000 starting price, destination included, and it largely avoids the pitfalls that often accompany a roofectomy. So returning to our original premise, if you like the VW Beetle, and you also like convertibles, maybe you should consider buying a Volkswagen Beetle convertible. <laughs>